Hey team, it is day 72. I hope you're doing well. Uh, wanted to get into the six goals. Uh, I guess I don't have to use red today, uh, but also wanted to talk about something as I stick at what I'm calling my set point right now, as I started to uh, mix a few more carbohydrates back in. I think you guys remember that. Um, got down to that 215, I think it was, yeah, 215, uh, and just bounced back and just have been sitting there. I went, I traveled for a little bit, ate horrible that one day, and just since then I just have been kind of sitting in this middle of the set point. Now, obviously, I've lifted a little heavier and added back carbohydrates. We even went through a macro planner, which is probably more with how I'm lifting heavy and things, more keen to having energy and things. But I'm doing all this research and I came by uh, a term called fat overshooting and I'm like, what? And then I read about it and I'm like, oh, okay, I got that. But let's go over the six goals and we'll walk through what is fat overshooting. And I think it's an interesting thing. I think it's the hidden thing of, of what we don't like to talk about, but here we go. 216.2, 2061. So just like I said, right at that macro, 144 ounces, seven hours of sleep, 45 minutes and 206 grams of protein. So like I hit it yesterday and I gained point like three pounds or something. So it's like, what the hell? I don't know what to do anymore. Um, but you know what? Obviously frustrated a little bit. I think in a way, when I think about where I set my goal at 206, um, I'll talk a little bit about this in, in the fat overshooting is um, I'm starting to learn some more things about my body as A, I've gotten older uh, since the last time that I had a really good cut going on and B, I think fat overshooting makes a little sense, but we'll go from here. So what is fat overshooting? That's basically, uh, it's the risk or it's when you basically put on more fat post diet than you had prior to the diet. Which is crazy. We're in a world of obesity where the, the overweight and obesity rates are climbing in America and yet there's more diets and I mean hell I'm talking to you guys about eating plans right now and stuff too. Uh, I'm not selling you anything but in the same sense it's like you, you talk about it and this is a huge problem. You've, I've talked to a ton of different people who have tried every diet under the sun. I've tried different eating plans and, and ultimate diets and, and things of that nature. But when you think about it, it makes sense. You know, the perfect story is, here's the perfect story is, hey, I'm gonna start that new diet that Celebrity X started. You know, they, they look so good after 14 days and you know, I'm gonna go on this 14 day diet. So you get, you know, you start eating a certain way, which probably drastically reduces your calories that you're taking. Uh, that's one, that's a, that's a red flag. Two is you try to exercise harder than you probably ever have because they're doing some sort of like total body thing and no weights and then you go hard and make sure you're sweating and blow up for two weeks. So you're reducing your calories to nothing. You're probably doing some aerobic, which, which causes anaerobic responses as far as glycogen burn and things. You're tired, you're pissed off. Um, and after about two weeks, you're like, F this. And you go to the hamper or the, the pantry and the fridge and you grab your sleeves of Oreos because you haven't got rid of those yet. You just on a whim emotionally tried this two week diet thing and you grab your whatever kind of milk, whole milk that you drink with that and you go take down a couple sleeves of Oreo, you know, and this goes on for about a week because you said, screw it. I worked really hard for two weeks. I'll start again after a week and all of a sudden you come back and it's like, boom, I weigh more than before I started my Celebrity X diet. And so that's essentially what fat overshooting is. Now I did some research on it and there's a lot of blog posts and, and uh, YouTube videos and stuff of people talking about this fat overshooting. People kind of throw it around. But the study that I looked at uh, was in the International Journal of Obesity is in 2005. So this has actually been around for a while. People have been talking about this. And, and scientists debate about it as far as like obese folks, that you know BMI's over 30 is considered obese you know, should lose weight, right? Like there's definite health benefits to that. We've talked about some of the health benefits in your numbers, pro-inflammatory compounds and all sorts of things that, that, that uh, extra adipose tissue causes, especially that central adiposity uh, that puts you at high risk for heart attack, stroke, all that kind of stuff, whatever. So 
uh, when you took a look at the study, it was interesting. So basically what it also showed was that people that are kind of almost normal weight, like, like not obese, but you know, maybe just overweight or more around normal weight, they were the ones that, that group of people were the ones that tended to, to gain more weight back. So not only do you put on more weight, but if you have, if you start closer to, to your goal, um, you, you know, you had a higher, higher risk for this fat overshoot. So here I am thinking, you know what? Um, I graduated high school at I think like 196, like almost 200 pounds, never lifted a weight in my life. Um, played sports in college and, and lifted, you know, decently heavy, uh, you know, got up to roughly 248, 250 uh, after all my lifting and things when I was in my mid 20s. And then, you know, have been yo-yoed a little bit. I'd been about 244 about a year ago. So, you know, started to slowly climb down. But all of the, the weight that I put on, the muscle that I put on, what I noticed with this, the, the eating plan that I got is that I wasn't doing, as, I wasn't lifting as heavy again. And remember, I don't know, it was probably two or three weeks ago, I said, hey, I'm gonna start including more carbs, I'm gonna up my carbs. And I'll show you in the, the before and after pictures when we hit, when you see the middle of it, you'll see like my chest and things, like just the way I, I've lost, by, like I lost weight, it was, I was losing some muscle with it. And when you lose muscle and your body starts to conserve that energy, my average calories were probably too low. There was some weeks I was at like 18 or 19, right at that 1900, so right under the lower range. But it was just funny to me that it's like, as I started to eat normal again, you know, and um, it's like, I can't get past my set point now, which is so weird to me. But I'm starting to learn those things as man, when I hit that 206, I believe it's totally possible. But now the more research that I'm doing, this is an excuse is just me being wrong, uh, was I think as far as a timing perspective, like I didn't give myself enough time to to pull that off and the caloric deficit that I needed, like I said, two pounds a week was too much for my body uh, as I started to hit that set point um, to make me comfortable with how I looked because I was starting to look what they call skinny fat. Uh, you know, I've still, I still had, you know, I still have a little bit here on, on the love handles and things and on a little bit down here, but it was, it was just, I was soft and I'm like, yeah, I don't like that very much. Um, so I think I'm learning. I think I'm, I'm learning that. And, and you know, when we, when we get to day 90, uh, you know, I'll sum it all up of, of what I've learned. I'll, I'll throw the average weeks uh, for calories in there and you, I'll just throw all the stats out for you so you can see how it looks. But what I'm learning is, is that um, fat overshooting is basically more probable if, oh, 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 oh. I think I'm only gonna need one more color for this one. So it's, it, oh, no, I don't like black. I mean like some bold color, but it's um, more likely to happen if you don't plan a diet <laughs> exit. So like this, this eating plan, for instance, that's why I like the calories, water, sleep, and you, you kind of, this is where you're testing your body to kind of find a calorie range. You're, you're testing, you're, you're tracking calories so you know what food groups you eat, how your body responds. I definitely, through my videos, have uh, went through like red meats. I, I retain a little bit more water. Eating uh, com uh, simple carbs late at night, I retain more overnight. Um, what was it? Oh, lifting super heavy. You tend to retain a little more as your body. Uh, repairs and now you know just bumping up my carbs with the macronutrients and the water that I'm doing so more carbs more water probably retaining that pray that I flush and you know end up in that like 211 212 range but we'll see what happens um, I'm just trying to be pragmatic but what I'm doing is is the whole time without really saying it is is trying to ensure that uh, those of you that are following this it's not going to happen. This fat overshooting is not going to happen to you because when I mean, you're going to go 90 days, uh, it's an eating plan. I didn't tell you what foods to eat, 
what kind of things to eat. I mean, I basically said calorie ranges, put a zero on what you want to weigh. If it's, you know, too low for a female, you know, like if you're starting at 200 pounds and you want to go to 120, I mean, come on, that'll take you 80 weeks, you know? So it's, a, it's one of those things also plan one pound for a week. So that's not super aggressive to me, like 0.5 pounds to one pound a week. If you got to lose 50 pounds, like I said before, it's going to take you a year. So I believe that this specific plan, calories, water, sleep, is healthy for you, but it's also gonna be less likely for you to have the fat overshooting. And it's also gonna be more likely that this diet exit isn't really kind of a diet exit. This is where you're gonna find your, well, this is my set point, and <laughs> you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna push through that, but this is where I think you're gonna find like, hey, what works best for me from a water perspective, from a food perspective, and you know, like my, my clothes are like fall. The, the hard part is, is you lose your fat where you don't want it to go. Like I'm Irish, no, but you know, I called my dad the cake pop, you know, in the first couple of lessons and sorry, dad, but, um, you know, uh, the legs, you know, you see it come off the places that you've worked so hard to put muscle on and things. And then you find out that genetics, you know, genetics do overrule you. So depending on where you carry and which I carry a majority of mine here, uh, you find out how much of it was your muscle when you don't lift as much anymore. So I go, I know I'm going off a track a little bit here, but with this eating plan, the thing I love about it is life happens and that allows it. Uh, there's no specific foods in here. Uh, you know, unless, uh, I, the, some of the people that I coach, um, and DM me if you DM, DM me if you want to talk more about this, but people that I individually coach, like we'll get some one-on-one -on -one plans and help tweak through some of these places that they get and help set up a, you know, a macro plan if they really want a, a, a food plan that is more conducive with, you know, let's say they're a shift worker or they eat lunch at four o'clock every day instead of noon, and, you know, certain things that their lifestyles have that's pretty consistent. We can work around that. Uh, but for the most part, you know, putting a zero on the weight you want or taking your weight you want times 11 and that's your calories in a day and then testing over time with a, with a calorie tracker not restricting yourself, like being able to eat some chips every once in a while, or, you know, always, if you want, you're probably going to take a little longer to lose. Uh, but over time, I, I just think as I do more and more research, I really do believe that this is, or something similar to this is the way you should be going. If you want to sustain a weight, a weight and a healthy weight or a healthy BMI, if you want to get there, it's a longer track. It's 90 days is, is just a start as far as I'm concerned. And it's a longer track for a longer life of knowing how to eat, what to eat, what you should eat. And that's because you're gaining knowledge during this time with how your body responds by weighing yourself daily, knowing that there's going to be ups and downs, and then using that data, that data to inform future decisions with food uh, and water. Uh, and we kind of know where sleep's supposed to be, seven and eight hours. That's just count, almost a non-negotiable, six and a half to eight and a half, maybe. That's about it. Anyway, I hope this helps. I hope this was pretty interesting. Super interesting to me based on where I'm at, so selfishly. Uh, just changing uh, a little bit of my perspective on where I most likely will end this 90-day challenge and not uh, putting that on anybody but myself, but just to admit that I was most likely wrong about A, the weight, as far as, is it really possible in 20 years that I've only, that I put on 10 or less pounds of lean muscle? I don't know. Um, I, it's, it, that's hard for me to believe based on how much I've been in that gym and, and, and how much I've done things and how much uh, activity I've been in, you know, but it, it could be, but that would mean I'd be pretty much in, at my fat free weight if, if I put on 10 pounds of lean muscle since I graduated and I graduated like six, 7% body fat. So yeah, you know, I was probably wrong with my projection right away, but we'll figure it out. We're going to find it out. But over time, I pray that you that are following, that you that are watching have, I don't know, gotten some, into some tips and tricks and just overall knowledge based on what I present with these different things uh, to help you make informed decisions about your life. So if you have any questions, let me know, leave them in the comments. If you have anything you want me to talk about in the future, let me know. I will do that. I appreciate all your support. Keep going. We got 18 days. You will do this. You can get this. Um, and if anything, you can get to a place that is, leaves you in a consistent plan 
and have the knowledge that in the future, if you fall off the wagon a little bit, you know exactly what it takes to get back on or what direction you should go to get there. So thank you so much again for your support. And as always, I look forward to talking to you tomorrow. Thanks again.